Okay. I hope everyone okay. can see it. I hope everyone okay. can see it. Okay. All right. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Abigail. Abigail Makulu. Okay. Okay, go on. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes, so my name is Abigail Makolo, and today I'll be talking to you about hacking open source as a designer. Um, I definitely would have loved to be with you in person, but it's great that we have this medium, and I hope that I can communicate as much as I can. Um, so I am a lead product designer, the lead product designer at Junity App by the Momentum Foundation in Connecticut, USA. And I'm also something I like to call an open source design avocado. Avocado basically means advocate. So I speak a lot about open source design and I try to create awareness um, that designers can contribute to open source. So I do hope that you would get some value from this um, short talk. Okay, so here's what we'll discuss today. We'll see what open source is about um, for those of you to whom it is um, new and then we'll see how you can design for open source and make design contributions to free and open source software also how you can succeed as an open source designer and i also have um, some resources that can get you started so well let's get right into it what is open source um, this is the point where i'd like to ask if anyone in the audience knows what it's about but it's fine, um, I can just explain from here. So when we say a project is open source, it means that its code, its design, everything related to it is publicly accessible. So people can read it, they can change it, they can share it, duplicate it, um, they can even collaborate, they can work together to make it better. That is the essence of open source, collaboration, teamwork, feedback, and peer review. Um, so when you have open source software that is both open and free, we call it FOSS, F-O-S-S, -S. it's an acronym. And there are many applications like that that we use that are free and open to use. So um, designing for open source, it's actually possible. Um, I started my open source design journey back in 2019 ending stroke 2020. And before then, I had no clue about, you know, the fact that designers could contribute to open source. So when I did learn about it, I was excited. Um, and I went further, I started my advocacy, I did some research, and this is how I would define open source design. It involves like introducing creativity, problem solving um, to projects that are free and open to read, modify and share. So basically contributing your design skills to open source software. That is what open source design is. And it's very possible that non-developers can contribute to open source, um, especially in design, in writing, technical writing and documentation, really different areas um, that one can contribute to open source. It's really possible. So like I said, um, Errol also shares the same sentiments. She said, um, they said that most designers don't have a clue about open source. And that is true because that was my personal experience as well. Um, it's also because the tools, the processes that are associated with open source can be quite complicated. Um, for instance, not all designers know about GitHub or GitLab, PRs, issues, like what are all those things? So it can be quite intimidating and that's why that awareness might not really be there because the open source field is mostly developer centric, even until now. Um, but it's great to see that nowadays more designers are doing more um, contributing to open source. Another thing is most people, um, especially designers, may not see the benefits of contributing to open source. They may think, well, it's free software. How am I going to earn from this? Or they might think it doesn't really help their career in any way. Um, but with this talk, we'll understand that these are all um, not true. Like you can find a way around it because contributing to open source is actually rewarding not only do you learn your skill not only do you build experience build your portfolio but you can actually also earn 
you can earn from open source design. And um, that will be talked about later on in this course, in this talk. So um, making design contributions to um, free and open source software, that is open source um, projects. Well, it depends really on the project that you're contributing to. Different projects require different levels of design um, assistance or design help. So some a good place to start would be maybe to report a bug or an issue that you found out or to run a design checklist and see where this project might need improvement. There are other things like um, creating or modifying the existing user personas based on research. There's empathy mapping. You can run a heuristic analysis or maybe even work on a basic style guide so that the design of that project will be consistent even for other designers and the developers who are working on that project. Um, you can also take more of a documentation route by redefining the design issues. So this is what an issue is. When um, a maintainer on an open source project discovers that, oh, they need help in something, they would go and create it as an issue. And, you know, being a developer, they might not structure it the way designers would understand really well. So as a designer, you can contribute here you can try to redefine it as a design challenge you can bring in the who the what the why how where all those things um, and help make that issue clearer to other people who may be trying to work on it that is a valid contribution to open source as well so you don't even need to do something super complicated um, you can definitely contribute to open source projects in small ways there are other things that you can do um, you can conduct user research um, ideation and brainstorming, maybe to come up with ways that the products or the software could be much better. You can sketch out your ideas and pre present them for review. You can also move move ahead to high fidelity prototyping if your ideas, you know, your sketches were reviewed and accepted. You can conduct usability testing. You can design a logo. You can do visual design. Really, anything that you do right now, you can contribute that to open source as a designer. And it's really interesting um, because that can really help you not only build your portfolio, but also your experience and also your network, because you'll be interacting with different people who are part of the community and that can really help you in your career. So I made a list of um, projects that are friendly to open source designers. So if you're looking to contribute design to open source, you can start from these projects. They really have good documentation for designers who are looking to contribute to their projects. They will tell you how you can contribute. Most of them actually have a UX team um, that is dedicated to you know, working with designers who would like to contribute. So you can look up some of these project, um, projects. I don't know if you have access to the slides after this, but you know they're all hyperlinked. Um, in this um, link, opensourcedesign.net slash projects. You can get more from there. All right, so we've talked about the possibilities of contributing to open source as a designer, but how exactly can you succeed? How can you hack open source as a designer? Well, let's see. I can tell you that it's possible. Um, I'm getting there. I, like I mentioned, I started late 2019 as a Google coding mentor Google Code In is a program for it's an open source program for students. So I was a mentor with the Anita Borg uh, Anita B .org community, which was previously called Sisters. Um, since then, I have been a member of open source communities like Open Source Design and Open Source Community Africa. I've also contributed to Mozilla Firefox. Um, it was part of an internship application, the outreach application phase. Um, I have been an open source design advocate since then, so I have been speaking and I've been a panelist at events, open source events that happen, you know, globally, like All Things Open, Open Up Summit and FOSTEM. I was supposed to speak at FOSTEM this, this year, but due to personal circumstances, I wasn't able to, but I definitely look forward to doing that next year. So you can also succeed in open source. I would say try to get familiar with open source first. Try to understand more about it, what the concept is. Um, you can learn about those things that may seem complicated. You can learn about GitHub, you can learn about PRs, what are those, you can learn about issues. It might help to look up open source dot guide. Um, that's the open source guide. It will give you a really good introduction to 
how you can contribute to open source, how you can start your own open source project if you want, you know, what the different tools and, you know, platforms that you need to use are. It's a really, really helpful guide. Um, so that's a good place to start, definitely. Um, you can also find, or you definitely should also find an open source project. It helps to start with a project that matches your interest and your reason for contributing to open source. So for instance, do you want to earn as an open source designer? If that is the case, you should be looking for jobs in open source design um, or internships. Um, like this is a screenshot from opensourcedesign.net slash jobs. They actually provide paid jobs. Um, people post paid jobs for their open source projects. And you can go and apply and get to work on it as a designer if you get accepted. Um, so is your motivation to maybe work on something related to health, to improving lives? There are projects that focus just on that. So finding a project that matches your interest is the biggest motivation you can get to contribute to open source because it could get, you know, a bit complicated in the beginning, but because you are motivated, you have a reason why you want to contribute, it would, you know, you would eventually get used to it. So good places for you to search for projects are opensourcedesign.net, GitHub, and there's also Outreachy, which is an internship. I'll talk about it a little later. All right, so now that you found your project, you should learn how to contribute to that project as a designer. You probably should not assume that, oh, you can do this for them or you can do this for them without first looking at the project, reading about it, learning about it. Look at the open issues that they have. What are their contribution guidelines? They, most of them usually have like a page like this that tells you um, what help they need. You know, for instance, this one is asking for you to suggest design improvements for their apps. Um, that is a way you can contribute. So if you want to contribute to this project, that is what they need you to do. Um, so find out a way that you can contribute and then follow the steps they've provided for you to make your contribution and to have it reviewed. So it's the same process. Usually if you go on GitHub or GitLab and you find the project um, repository, they have a file called contributing.md if you don't find it, you'd find a page that looks just like this that explains what you need. And if you can't find any of that, you should reach out to them. Um, try to maybe join their community and ask them how you can help them as a designer. So, like I said, join and participate in the community. Don't just like work off GitHub or just focus only on your contributions. Joining the community and being active is a great way for you to build an identity for yourself. They would recognize you and the value you're trying to add to their projects. And it also gives you um, um, more space to present your ideas, to get feedback and to suggest improvements. So definitely I would recommend joining the community of the open source project that you want to work on. This is an example for the anitab.org community. Um, some of them use Slack, some of them use um, Zulip or some other platforms. Um, there are always steps they will provide to help you join, you know, know what to do when you join the community. All right, so now that you've joined the community and you know how to make your contribution, go ahead and make your first design contribution. And when you do, try to present and document your work clearly because you're going to have your work reviewed. Probably they won't be re your work will, might not be reviewed by designers. It might be re reviewed by developers, testers. So you should present and document your, your work clearly and follow the guidelines. For instance, if they ask you to document, maybe you're, you're reporting an issue and they ask you to document how to reproduce the issue what is the expected behavior try to do that so that they can understand that is what um, open source is all about there should be that communication that everybody you know can really benefit from so when you post your your um, design or your work definitely ask for feedback try to interact with them on the community and implement reviews as well 
So it's just the same thing you keep doing for you to grow in your open source design career. Um, continue to make contributions. Look out for open source internships. I mentioned Outreachy. It's a paid internship, so they pay like seven thousand um, US dollars, and it runs for three months. They usually have three round. I'm sorry, two rounds in a year. So if that interests you, you can wait for like the next round and apply and see if there's a project that you definitely like to work on. Um, so there are internships, there are jobs, paid jobs, um, there are workshops that you can organize, there are events you can attend. Um, so definitely there is a lot of, there are a lot of opportunities for you to grow um, as an open source designer. So here are um, some resources that I've put together. You can find more resources at opensourcedesign.net slash resources. Um, but these are basically articles, these are books. Um, you know, tools that you definitely want to take advantage of as you're kickstarting your open source design career. The tools on the right are actually all, okay, most of them are open source tools. Penpot, for instance, is an open source design tool. Um, Draw.io, Inkscape, all of those are open source design tools um, that you can, you can explore. All right, so I will conclude this talk by saying designers can be open sources too. Not just designers, technical writers, software testers. You don't have to be a developer to be an open sourcer. You can contribute to open source as long as you have the motivation and you have the interest to do so. So thank you very much for listening. Um, I'm on Twitter at Abigail underscore Mac. Um, you can send me a DM because I'm not always very active on Twitter these days. Um, but if you have any questions, I'll be happy to entertain your questions. Thank you.